and welcome to episode 13 of the Millennial Mum podcast. If you are not new here, welcome back. But if you are new here, hi, my name is Yasmin. I am a mum to two beautiful, crazy boys, Finley, who is nearly two and a half, and Hunter, who is literally six months old in a couple of days from the day that I am recording this podcast episode. And I am a mum who is not only navigating her way through motherhood, but also trying to balance work life as well. I run two successful businesses at the moment, and I am using this platform to educate, share, and create a community of working mums who just get it, right? So first of all, I just want to say what a shambles <laughs> last week was, right? I am, every other week, I'm interviewing other mums in business to share their stories so we can take value, we can ask questions, I can selfishly just like ask questions and like get to know people more, right? And then obviously share their story with you guys. I had such a wicked interview with a mum in business who was local to me when I lived in Milton Keynes and it just didn't record. <laughs> We spent our Friday evening, we spent like an hour of our Friday evening having this interview, having this amazing conversation and the bloody thing just didn't record. So that's quite annoying. But you know what? I actually wrote this in one of the emails I sent out to the Millennial Mum community last week. Like before the Yasmin of maybe like two years ago or maybe even like a year ago, not even that long ago, really, I would have been so hard on myself and would have forced myself up really early on Monday morning to make another podcast episode, really stretch myself, really run myself into the ground. And even though you might think, oh, yeah, it's like you you could have been able to do that. Like you would have been able to do that and it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Yes. But if I would have acted in that way, in every little mistake that happens in my business, I would burn out so fast. So I feel like, especially since having my second child, I am really like setting boundaries with myself. And look, did anyone die? No. Like, Did some of you miss last week's episode? Yeah, don't get me wrong. I know I had a few messages from you guys, but like there's 12 other episodes that you could listen to. Do you know what I mean? Like you're now listening to the next one and everything's fine and we're just going to continue as normal. Yeah. So I'm really trying to not put too much pressure on myself to make everything perfect. And sitting here now recording this week's episode, I feel a lot calmer from having made that decision. So moving on to this week, I'm literally just going to get into the nitty gritty because I know so many of you are thinking, oh my God, like, what is she going to tell us this week? So the top three things that I wish someone would have told me when I started my business journey, and even more so when I had my kids, are little light bulb moments that I really hope I can help you guys along your journey with, because I genuinely wish someone would have sat me down. I know this would like is an impossible thing anyway, but like I wish someone would have sat me down and been able to say this, 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 and this. Do you know what I mean? So the first one is, and <laughs> guys... You need to listen to this one loud and clear. There is no such thing as work-life balance. Okay, I'm just going to say it again. There is no such thing as work-life balance. And you know what? When I realised this, when I really, really realised this, it felt like such a pressure had been lifted, like a massive weight was just taken off my shoulders. Because guess what, guys? Work is a part of our life, okay? And I think work becomes an even bigger part of your life when you work for yourself, when you run your own businesses, because often, especially when it's in like the early days of your business journey, of your entrepreneurial journey, you're working from home. So the lines can be very, very blurred. Yeah. But also when you love what you do, work becomes an even bigger part of your life. So this is a message to anyone who is chasing this perfect balance between working and doing the things that you love you're never going to get the perfect balance I mean guys if you do if someone out there listening to this has the perfect work-life balance then please hit me up and let me interview you on this podcast because I need to know how you're doing it (laughs) but like to the normal average person there is never going to be the perfect balance and I think that's because just like anything there's peaks and troughs of where you're going to spend your time and energy so for example let's say right now is the, the summer holidays Yeah. So it's likely that you're going to be putting more time and energy into family things and the things that you love compared to working in your business. And that's okay. Yeah. And then on the flip side of that, let's say you work in sales. November might be your busiest time of the year if it's coming up to Christmas. So in those moments, you might be spending more time doing business and sacrificing some family things 
and maybe like you might be sacrificing doing some bath times you might be sacrificing doing some bedtimes maybe you'll get your other half involved maybe you'll even get your parents involved um maybe you'll even like arrange for sleepovers for your kids to stay with friends or stay with family like if if you've got a big project going on around those times and that's also okay but i think understanding and realizing that there's never going to be this perfect balance all the time takes that pressure away and means that in those times when you are working more on the business you know that this is only short term yeah and then it also means on the flip side say like the summer holidays even though I know I feel like at this point we're only like a week in and <laughs> all over my socials I feel like mums are pulling the hair out already um pulling the hair p- pulling, pulling the hairs out pulling the hair out you know what I mean pulling the hair out already um like you're going to be able to enjoy those moments a bit more without feeling guilty because you know that the balance is never going to be perfect. Number two, don't be afraid to look at the bigger picture and make sacrifices. Now this particular one I think is quite controversial and I think it depends on who you speak to and what your family setup is like right? So obviously when the kids are young, there's so many milestones, there's so many things that happen for the first time and we want to be there for everything and we want to be able to experience absolutely everything, okay? But what if I pose the question to you of, would you rather be comfortable in the here and now and be there for every single milestone and every single friend and family event and end up struggling a bit more than you would like in the future or would you make small sacrifices now, maybe not go to like every family event, maybe go to friend um, birthday parties and maybe be like the first one to leave, not get drunk, um, maybe miss out on some Saturday times at the local bar with the family to work on your business so that you can be really comfortable and have a really successful business to do all of those things completely at your leisure in the future what would you choose? And it goes back to the whole thing of like, it depends what your family setup is, because some people don't have that choice. Yeah, some people, especially let's say like single mums, for example, some single mums just don't have that choice. And they have to be in like, fight or flight mode all the time. And they always have to be in business building mode. And they can't like do the whole, oh, I'm going to sacrifice this today, and then not tomorrow. Like sometimes they just have to sacrifice everything. Yeah. But people who are in that fortunate position of being able to choose, would you rather choose short-term sacrifices or the long-term sacrifices and actually I really want to empower you to not feel guilty about making the sacrifices yeah and you know what making those sacrifices in like the here and now is so much easier when you have clear goals and a clear vision and if you need any help with that listen to my previous um one of my previous episodes because I actually talk through like how you can create your not dream life but like how you can get really clear on how much money you need to earn and what that would look like what that would look like for your life right which was completely like revolutionary for me right proper made me have a massive light bulb moment yeah so I think it's like sometimes we could make decisions let's say let's use the friend's birthday for example um let's use the friend's birthday party as an example right so let's say there's like a really good friend of yours they've got their birthday party and you want to go um you can either go and get absolutely smashed and be absolutely wasted the next day even though like the next day is when you're going to be like planning to do all your work and get like some serious shit done or you can still go to the party but you can not get that drunk you might leave at say like 11 o'clock so you can still get in like a full eight hours of sleep you're going to wake up the next morning feeling absolutely fresh yeah that might be a sacrifice and a decision that you make so you can still crack on with your stuff the next day some of your friends might not agree with you some of your friends might be like, what are you talking about? This is like the party of the year or, oh my God, what are you talking about? Like we haven't seen you in ages and you're literally going to come and you're not going to drink and you're not going to be fun and then you're going to leave early. Like, what is that all about? Yeah. So there might be decisions that you make and sacrifices that you make in the here and now that other people just don't understand. Yeah. And I think it's like, it's quite funny because I was actually talking to Sam about this just before I started recording because I like to always talking through like what my podcast episodes are going to be about and just kind of like do a bit of a blueprint because I don't like plan these word for word. I just like have a bit of a topic and I just roll with it. Yeah. And um, obviously with this one, I planned out like what the three things were because I knew what they were anyway. Um, But it's like people can understand your sacrifices when you've made it. 
Yeah, so let's say using that example of the friend's birthday party again, yeah? Let's say in 10 years time when you're absolutely smashing it, your business is like going from strength to strength, you're going on three holidays a year, you're living that life that you want to live, whatever that be, um, you're successful in whatever form that means to you, right? At that point, when you are happy, successful, and your business is where you want it to be, your friends will be like, oh yeah, like, I wish I could do this, make the sacrifices you made, oh, I totally get it, oh, you're amazing, blah, blah, blah. And they can see, they can see the results of the sacrifice, but in the moment of choosing to leave the birthday party at X time and choosing not to drink and choosing maybe not to go to some family functions or whatever it is, yeah, choosing not to like take the kids to the zoo with all your other mum friends on that particular day because you're working or whatever, like in those moments, like actually in the moments, a lot of people don't understand because to them it's like, well, it's just one day. Oh, it's just one hour. It's, oh, it's just one party. It was just one weekend. But it's like, if you have that same attitude to every single event, you're gonna lose so much time, yeah? And and this is this is why this was like my second point in what I wish someone would have told me because there's been so many times where I've made sacrifices or also where I've wanted to make a sacrifice but I've kind of felt not pressured in a bad way, but feel like I need to make other people happy at being at certain family events or being around certain friends or whatever because I just knew that they weren't going to understand and I'm trying to step into my power of actually just being so clear on what I want to achieve, what I want my life to look like and making the appropriate sacrifices kind of not, not, not taking into consideration of what other people think but like you have to put yourself and your family first and I've definitely stepped into that more since having my second baby. But it's all well and good making these sacrifices, yeah? But you have to make sure that you remember to make time and take time to do the things and spend time with the people that you love. Yeah. And that is my third point. So I wish at the beginning of my journey, when I started my own business, especially when I then started having a family and stepping back into work and having that balance or trying to find that balance, whatever that is of working and mum life, I wish someone would have sat me down and had a serious conversation with me and told me to remember to take time for doing the things that I love. I cannot tell you the amount of times, especially when I've been in like full business building mode, yeah, that I would have been with family, with friends, or even like playing with my kids, yeah, like in the front room or in the garden or whatever. And I would be feeling such a deep sense of anxiousness and I don't even think that's a word I think it's anxiety isn't it like a deep sense of anxiety and stress because I would feel the need to be working yeah and I basically in those moments I've just stripped myself of happiness because I haven't been working so I haven't been doing the thing that I apparently feel like I need to be doing but then I also haven't been present in the moment and it just, it, it's just stripped me of my happiness in that moment and stripped me from being able to be present and enjoying those moments. And that's not healthy. And it's crazy because I feel like we have this idea in our head that when we start making X amount of money, we're all of a sudden going to be living our dream life or we're going to start making time for all these amazing things and all these family days out and all of this time, whatever. That's just not the case. And I actually mentioned that on one of my previous podcast episodes about how like you need to start living intentionally and using your time intentionally because then as the money comes the things that you spend your time on will become better and better because you'll be able to give more to it if that makes sense so like for example um having days out with your family they're important to do like scheduling time to do those things it sounds stupid scheduling time but like sometimes if you don't schedule it, it just doesn't happen because life happens and the time just goes so fast right so it's like okay well when you don't have the big money that you want to be having at the moment, let's say you want to be earning five grand a month and at the moment you're earning two, you might not be able to afford the big days out that you want yet, but you can still make time to have those family days on a smaller scale. Okay, like don't go to your local park, spend the day, drive half an hour to a bigger park and have a family day out, take a picnic. Yes, in six 12 months time, those little days out might become going for a weekend away to Peppa Pig World or to a zoo or whatever, do you know what I mean? But you have to make sure that you make the time for that. 
And the best way to do it, which I've just touched on, is scheduling that time. Yes, yeah? scheduling time in your diary, in your month, in your calendar to doing those things and also getting your family on board. So sit down with your with your partner, sit down with your kids if they're old enough to understand and talk about the life that you want to live, the things that you want to do. I'm sure like if your kids are maybe like five, six, seven and older, they're going to have quite clear dreams or quite clear ideas of how they'd want to spend their weekend as a family they might want to go to like the aquarium or they might want to go to a theme park but having those conversations getting clear on okay what does a good family day out look like for us then saying okay well at the moment we can't afford that or at the moment we can't fit that into what what our commitments are at the moment but this is what we could do let's schedule in this weekend every month to go and do this and while mummy is working in the times when you see mummy in her office and you know that she's working really hard just know that she's working hard to so that we can go on those days that you've just said you really want to do in the future how amazing is that going to be? Then not only have you got that big goal of, okay, this is why you're working in your business. This is what you want to achieve, but you're also not going to feel guilty. And you know that the kids are going to understand. So when they see mummy in the office or they see mummy on her phone working, or they know that mummy isn't doing bath time tonight, they actually know what it's for. They're not just thinking, oh, mummy's not here tonight. Mummy's working. Like they know what the end goal is. Then, sorry, at the end of all of that, when you actually do go to Peppa Pig World or you do go to the aquarium or you do go to the museum or wherever it is, how amazing as a family are you going to feel? Like, it's going to be amazing. But all of that starts with scheduling in the time for the things that you love in the here and now. No matter how much money you're earning, you need to remember to have downtime from your business, spending time doing the things that you love and also with the people that you love and that love you. So yeah, I genuinely wish that there was someone that could have sat me down at the start of my business owning journey and being a mum when I mixed the two together and told me those things but I feel like we're just always learning like in whether it's in business whether it's motherhood like there's always a lesson to be learned in literally every day and I really hope that by sharing those three things that I've helped another mum on her business journey juggling mum and business life it's just crazy it's such a crazy ride isn't it really um but if you have found value in this episode please do me a massive favor and share it to your socials make sure you tag me it actually means so much more to me than you realize a, a few seconds of just screenshotting this and putting it on your socials tagging me means the absolute world to me and i have been overwhelmed with the messages and the support that I've had from doing this podcast and also knowing that I'm helping other mums on their journey. So also, if you know another mum who you feel like needs to hear this in the here and now, whether she's struggling at the moment or you feel like she needs help with her mindset or you just feel like actually there's some good pointers here to help someone else, then please share this episode to them. As always, I appreciate you for being here so much and I cannot wait to see you on the next episode.